Hey parents, in my last video, I released my free curriculum on the fastest way to learn coding. If Python is the best programming language to learn for beginners, building web projects is the quickest way to become a software engineer. For that reason, this time I'm releasing another free curriculum on web development, the highest in-demand software engineering skill in the job market. The entire curriculum is available on my website at powerkingdom.com or simply click the link below. Included are the free web development courses plus my strategies for landing a job. Just for context, I'm PK, a software engineer in Seattle. I used to work at Microsoft, Amazon, and eBay. In my previous video, I recommended the YouTube channel Free Code Camp and its free tutorials for my general software development curriculum. For web development, however, I'm introducing the channel Traverse Media and their free crash courses. And no, this isn't a sponsorship. It's my genuine recommendation. I learned React and Vue from their classes too. My curriculum is a series of their courses I handpicked myself. If I were to learn web development from scratch, this is the order I would do it. Let's start with the basics. What are front end, back end, and full stack? Front end refers to the web page and its interfaces that users can see and interact with. Simply put, everything you see on Amazon.com, the texts, images, buttons, and layout falls under the front end. On the contrary, the back end refers to everything else behind the scenes. When you click the place your order button, your card gets charged, shipping gets tracked, and the delivery estimate is calculated. That's because back end developers have instructed the servers to do so under the hood. Lastly, a full stack developer is an engineer capable of doing both. Let's dive deeper into the front end. A website's three basic building blocks are HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. HTML controls the structure of a website. It tells the browser to place a button here. CSS is responsible for its decoration. It stylizes the button by defining its position, color, and size. Lastly, JavaScript tells the browser what to do when clicking the button. For example, sign in to Amazon. But where do we learn about these building blocks, Traverse Media. Follow their crash courses in my curriculum. Some are a few years old, but that's okay because fundamentals do not change. Another thing I love about their content is that it's less than 90 minutes and packed with just the essentials. Next up, Bootstrap. Bootstrap is the most popular free CSS framework for developing a responsive website. A website is responsive if the appearance changes depending on the screen size. For example, this is how my website looks on a PC. This is how it looks on a phone. Do you see how the navigation bar changes to a hamburger on a particular window width? That's because my website's responsive. It resizes the content to fit different screen width. Implementing all this yourself can be time consuming and challenging, but Bootstrap takes care of that for you. Learn how Bootstrap works and apply it to your website. You can account for different devices with a single code base and make your website look professional with its built-in templates and themes. Let's pause on coding for a sec and quickly go over Git. Git is a free version control tool used for source code management. Getting accustomed to it is crucial because the entire industry uses it. Now, it's time to review your learnings by creating a project. Working on projects is the best way to learn to code. Since this is your first project, keep it small and simple. I recommend starting with a personal bio website. Apply your knowledge and use this opportunity to build your online presence. You can develop more features as you progress and add links to your other projects. Once you finish your first website, let's make it public or available online for free. But how? GitHub pages. Follow Traversy Media's step-by-step -step instructions on deploying your website for free using GitHub Pages. Cool, we deployed our first website. Next, let's learn JavaScript. JavaScript is a scripting language that makes your website interactive. For example, changing the color of a button or alerting the users. While at it, study JavaScript DOM, jQuery, and Ajax. jQuery is getting deprecated, but it's still a practical skill that's easy to pick up. Add it to your resume skill set. Once you complete the JavaScript series, improve your first project with the new skills. What can you do to make it more interesting and interactive? Get creative. All right, we've covered the basics of front-end development. Let's move on to the back-end. Back-end development means working on the server side, writing the logic for everything you cannot see on a website. 
you have several choices for the tech stack. You can continue with JavaScript with Node or explore other options like Python with Django or Flask, Java with Spring, or c -sharp with .NET. For this curriculum, I'll stick to JavaScript and Node for three reasons. One, you only need one coding language. You can go full stack with JavaScript alone. Two, JavaScript and Node were both voted to be the most popular technologies in 2022. They are in high demand. Three, we want the fastest way to learn web development, right? Stick to one language. We now understand the importance of JavaScript. Let's get serious with ES6 Plus and learn the latest JavaScript syntax. Then move on to asynchronous JavaScript. Learn what callbacks, promises, and async await keywords are. These concepts lay the foundation for Node.js, a backend JavaScript environment. Then move on to Express.js. Express is a middleware framework for building REST APIs with Node. Lastly, REST API is the most common way for two computer systems to exchange information over the internet. In our curriculum, your front-end web project will communicate with your backend via REST APIs. We're almost done with the backend. Just one last piece remains, which is the heart of any system, the database. There are several options for a database product, like MySQL and PostgreSQL, but I recommend MongoDB for two reasons. One, it has a free tier. I mean, who doesn't like free, right? Two, MongoDB is NoSQL, and NoSQL databases are easier to learn and use. Once you set up MongoDB, learn Mongoose. Mongoose is a JavaScript library that facilitates communication with MongoDB. It helps you query and store information in the database. Finally, it's time to put your skills into practice by building your first backend app. Again, keep your first one simple. Start with a basic CRUD. How about a to-do app? Apply the REST principle, HTTP verb get retrieves, post creates, put updates, and delete removes a to-do list. Verify your API works by checking your storage. Your API actions should reflect your database. Once your backend is complete, deploy your node server to the cloud just as you did for your frontend. This time, however, use Google's Firebase instead of GitHub Pages. Experience in cloud technologies is a huge plus in the job market. Cool, let's quickly return to the front end to learn React.js. React is a free front end JavaScript library developed by Meta for building user interfaces. It allows you to reuse components and write maintainable code. You might wonder, why are we returning to the front end? And my short answer to that is, React is important. Trust me, it's a valuable skill many companies view as essential. You won't get a front end job without it. Follow Traverse Media's latest crash course on React with hooks, then revamp your front end app using React. The last skill set in the curriculum is unit testing. Unit testing is a critical skill that many often overlook, but not only is writing a unit test easy, but it's also a valuable skill to add to your resume. I recommend Jest. It's a JavaScript testing framework maintained by Meta. Use it to write unit tests in JavaScript and understand its importance. We're almost there. One last assignment remains, and that is integrating your React frontend with your Node backend. Once everything's wired up, congratulations, you are a full stack developer. That's the end of the web development curriculum. Here are my strategies for finding your first full-time job. You can find the details in the links below, so I'll briefly touch them here. Step one, build a professional portfolio. Let me emphasize professional here. A personal bio web page integrated with a to-do app isn't one. Build at least two high quality, full stack projects spending about 40 to 60 hours each. Treat them as non-paid professional work. Step two, create a strong resume. Showcase your projects on your resume and add their GitHub links. Check this video for my strategies on how to craft an effective resume. Step three, prepare for coding interviews. LeetCode is the best platform to prepare them. Follow my study guide on how to use LeetCode effectively here. Step four, start applying. If you find a job soon, great. But I'll be honest, despite doing all this, it will still be bloody challenging for most of you to find your first full-time software engineering job. But let me share what I did in the interim. I looked for part-time developer jobs. That's how I built my career. I started as a part-time game developer in Japan, getting paid 800 yen or about $7 an hour. There are similar jobs in the US too, including remote ones. If you're still unconvinced, my friend's first coding job was part-time Python engineer in the US. How do you find one? The almighty Google. 
where there's a will, there's a way. Embrace your part-time job as an opportunity to learn while getting paid. That's how I landed my first internship at NCSoft, then my first full-time job at eBay, then Amazon, Microsoft, and so on. All right, we discussed the fastest way to become a software engineer for free. If you're still unconfident and prefer an affordable alternative, consider giving Springboard's coding bootcamp a try. You can get a thousand dollar discount off their curriculum with my promo code PirateKing. Before I close, let me make this clear. I try my best to give you the easiest path forward, but that doesn't mean coding itself is easy. Take it seriously if you don't want to give up midway. Realistically, if you're determined and commit to coding at least two hours a day, I'm confident you can successfully become a software engineer within six to 12 months. Remember, the best way to learn to code is to do it. Start coding now. Like and subscribe now. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.